Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to set up some creative footers. Now, when you're dealing with your headers and your footers, it's a slightly different layout terminology where we have things instead of sections, rows, and columns, we have things like bars and containers. But at the end of the day, they function very similarly and we can actually end up working with the tools that we are comfortable and familiar with directly in the header and footer builder. So, Without further ado, let's dive in. Here we are with a fresh footer setup here. And if you don't know how to set up a footer, you're going to click on the plus sign here. You're going to go to footer and click create. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do with any footer is choose how you'd like to start. With footers, quite often a template works very well, but you can also start from scratch. If you wanted to use a template, you simply click here. We have the theme code templates, and there are a lot of great templates in this setup. I find that footer 01 here and footer 02 are great baselines for creating your build. But what if you wanted to do something completely from scratch? Well, that's what we're going to look at here today. We're going to go ahead and click from scratch. And now you'll notice I have my header navigation in line with my content. My content is set to, if I go into options here, our site max width is 1200 pixels. So down here in our footer, I wanna make sure that my bar has a max width that matches our global container. So I could either type in 1200 pixels here. So let's go ahead and just do that to see what it looks like. And you'll notice our container is going to shift over now, sort of in line with our text here. Or instead of typing in a max width here, we can just tell the bar that we want it to respect our global containers, just like we do with divs and rows inside of the page builder. And now we have our bar and we have our column respecting our global container. Now with that done, we can begin building. Let's go ahead and click on our container here. And inside of the container, we can begin adding elements. Now you could add divs inside of this and start creating your own sort of row column setup. But to keep things super simple, I'm just going to click on add element. I'm going to type in row. This is one of the most common layouts that you will likely use. So the row is a good versatile dynamic container for this setup. But there are many ways to do this. So let's go ahead and click on our row here. And we want this row to stretch the max width of our container. So what we're going to do is scroll down to where it has width here. And we are going to type in 100%. Now that row falls nicely within our container. But you will notice that it is spilling out vertically. And that's because our bar here has a fixed height out of the box by default of 100 pixels. So for the time being, while we're working on things, let's go ahead and type in in auto. Now we have a bar that is functioning like a section. We have a container here that is functioning like a div. And then we have our row here inside of that container. Now we want to have a business summary on the left here and then a couple of link columns on the right. So we might go with something like this setup here where we have four columns. Now within those columns, let's go ahead and begin building. So in column one, Let's go ahead and add an image. And this image is going to be our logo. So we'll just pop uh, you know, this guy right in here. And there we have it. Now, because this isn't a real logo, I'm just going to go ahead and size this down. Let's say it's, uh, let's go 80 pixels. That'll make it nice and small here. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to get our text and we'll pop some lorem ipsum text right down here. I think that's looking pretty good there. Now, I do want a little bit of padding separation uh, you know, between what we have going on here. So I might go into my bar here, add some padding, and let's just go with, uh, I'm picking an arbitrary number here, but let's go with 100 pixels top and 100 pixels bottom. Now we have a nice footer bar. Within that bar, we have a container that's respecting our max width. Within that container, we have a row with four columns. We have our logo and we have our text. And now I'm gonna be using the new gap feature here. So I'm going to enable flex box, make sure I'm on vertical column here, and I'm gonna do one M of vertical gap across the board here. So anything I add inside of this column will always respect that one M of vertical gap now. So now I wanna create some link structures here. So in column two, we're gonna go ahead and grab a headline and you could set this headline up as you see fit. I think I'm just gonna make this an H6 for now and we'll call this company. This is going to be links about the company here. Um, maybe we just style this very quickly here. We'll go bold and I actually want to underline it but I want it to be a full width line. So we'll do something like this with a height of one pixel 
and I think that's looking pretty good. Let's just go full on, no transparency there. Yep, that's looking good. And maybe we make our headline all uppercase just so that it stands out. Now we'll come in here and we'll grab a nav and we'll do an inline nav and we'll drag that right down here. And you might be saying, well, why in the world would you be doing an inline nav that looks terrible? But we can click on our inline navigation, make sure that we have menu selected in the tab, scroll down to where we have flex box and change it from flex direction row to flex direction column. And immediately you'll notice that it now has a vertical layout, but it still looks a little bit wonky here. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're actually gonna jump over to our top links here and we are going to set this horizontal flex box to start, which now brings them all over to the left side, but they're not quite in line with company here. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you could go about lining these up, but I am simply going to remove our left padding and now everything should start to line up nicely. If you still notice a little bit of gapping there on the left hand side, that's because there is. If we scroll all the way down to where we have our text margin, we could get rid of the five pixels of text margin here as well. And now everything shifts over nicely. I don't love all of the space in here for a footer menu. I really like those menus to be condensed. So I'm going to scroll up to our padding again here and I'm gonna make our top padding 0.25 and I'm gonna make our bottom padding 0.25 as well. And now I think that is looking pretty good. And then typically in a footer menu, you wouldn't have a drop down. So just for the sake of example, I'm gonna jump over here and where we have our sample menu, I'm gonna choose sample menu, no drop downs, just so that we don't keep seeing that drop down menu on hover there. So that's looking pretty good. You know, I do want a little bit of visual separation between the headline and the nav. So I could add some margin, I could add a gap element, I could add gap all around. The problem with adding gap all around is if I come in here and I click flex box, and I make sure it's on vertical and I add one M of gap all around, our line gets gapped as well. And I don't really want that. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna select our column, find the line here and select that. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of bottom margin to the line, maybe one M. So now it separates our navigation from that bottom line and things are looking nice. Now, if I wanted to, let's just add a hover color to our footer menu items here, just so it's uh, a little more visible. Let's go ahead and go with something kind of blue here. So in our hover, we'll go with something like that. So now you can see what you're hovering on. And I think that's looking fine and dandy. Now I'm gonna copy column two. So I'm just hitting command C or control C on my keyboard. I'm gonna come to column three and paste it in and column four and paste it in as well. So now I have company, let's do products. And this last one could be contact. And now again, I think this is gonna function as a great baseline for us. Let's say we also wanna include some social icons in here. We can actually come in to our elements, grab a div, and let's drag that right out here into our first column where we sort of have uh, the logo, sort of maybe a mission statement or something about the company here, and then our social media icons. Now inside of this div, we wanna make sure that we have Flexbox enabled and we want flex direction row, and we wanna have a gap of one M again. This is specifically inside of this div here. Now inside of that div, I'm gonna type in social and I'm gonna grab some of our social links here and pop those right in here. I'm not gonna style them right now, but you could obviously style each of these social links as you see fit. But let's go ahead and add four of them. And you'll notice they automatically space out nicely using our new gap feature. And we could come in here, we could scroll down, we go to brands. The second one will make Instagram. This third one will make LinkedIn. And this last one will make YouTube. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So now we wanna make sure things scale. So let's go ahead and just check on a small desktop here. And I think things are looking pretty nice, but as soon as we get down to our laptop size, you'll notice we're getting cut off on the right hand side here. So what's going on there? Well, let's go ahead and make sure that we have our container one selected and under our grow and shrink cell flex, let's go ahead and change it from fill space, which is the default of the container to standard. So we'll go with something like this here. Now we wanna make sure that this looks good across the board. So when we go back up to desktop, you'll notice our container one is now actually sort of shifted over to the left. What we wanna do now is set our width on container one to 100%. And now things are coming together nicely. So now when I go down to 979 pixels on a laptop screen, things are looking nice here. When I go to a tablet size, things are looking a little bit squished. So we're gonna click on our row and then just like you would in the page builder, maybe we do something like two up, two down. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. 
Then we'll go to our large mobile, and I think that's still looking pretty good. And then we'll go to our small mobile, and things break down to one column. And again, I think that's looking nice. If for some reason we wanted to change our icons here, we can click on the div, we can scroll down, and where we have flex direction, we can click on the word direction and change our direction just on a certain screen size. So when we get down to mobile, it stacks vertically. I don't know why we do that, but now you know how. And then when we go up screen sizes, it goes back to horizontal. So you have a lot of control over what you're doing in your footer. Now, we can take this a step further. Just like with headers or with sections on a page, we can actually have multiple bars for our footer. And I tend to do this a lot when I'm trying to do some sort of copyright bar at the bottom. So I'll add another bar, and this one's gonna be much simpler. We can just leave that default 100 pixels. We could even go slightly smaller than that. We'll go ahead and uh, turn off our box shadow, and instead, we'll just make this slightly off-white. So it's just a little bit different than the main footer area. That's probably a little too dark there. Let's try this. That's looking pretty good. Now we'll come in here, we'll type in text. We'll drag our text out here. Now again, we wanna repeat some of the same steps that we did above. We want this container to be 100% width. We want it to be standard, but we also wanna make sure that we are respecting our global margins. So we're gonna do global container here, and now that's in line with this stuff here. Let's go back to our full screen, and you can see how that's in line and coming together nicely with the other one. Now in here, we might type something like copyright, and then we want the year, so we'll go in here and we'll type in date. We'll scroll down to where we have the global current date. We'll click the cog. We'll come into format, click custom format, and just type in Y. That's just the year. So now we never have to think about this copyright again. It's always going to be the current year. And we might say all rights reserved or some legal mumbo jumbo like that and now we have our second bar now i actually want this to be slightly smaller let's go 70 pixels and now that's looking pretty good as well let's jump this down see how things are looking yep everything is looking pretty good there so now the last thing to do is make sure this actually goes live on your site and the way we're gonna do that is by jumping over to our outline here. We'll go ahead and give this a title. I use things like GF for global footer or GN for global nav, which is my header uh, one. So I know that this is, if I had a second one, I can label them accordingly. So I have GF one is my name. I'm gonna jump into settings and under conditions, I now need to assign this. So I'm going to add a condition group and this is going to be assigned to the entire site in our case here, but you could obviously choose your conditions as you see fit. With that done, I'm gonna go ahead and save. I'm going to jump out to the front end of my site, and when I scroll to the bottom, you're gonna actually notice that a different footer is there, and this is another footer that I have set up. Now, the footers always respect a priority level, just like your headers, and so that other footer that I have set up must also have something like a priority zero. So I can do one of two things. I can open up my documents here and go into footers, and you'll notice I actually have two gf ones so that's not super helpful. We'll open up our original GF1 here and take a look and it is a zero. If I wanted both of these to exist, I could make this a one and my new one a zero. Uh, but what I'm gonna actually do is simply remove my assignment conditions here. So we'll go ahead and now save that. And when we jump back out to the front end here and we refresh, we should see our new footer showing up at the bottom here. Now, these are opinionated styles, so have at it and make it your own. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building!